I'm a 3D artist, and in this video, I'm going to give YouTubers their own LEGO sets and then pitch those sets to a real LEGO designer. This is a LEGO ship in a bottle, and this is the guy who designed it, as well as all these other sets. It turns out he has a YouTube channel of his own, so I was able to get in contact with him. I've been a LEGO psychopath since the age of five, so getting this set up was a big deal. Except there's one small problem, and that is I have no idea how to do any of this, and the call is in one week. Now, this isn't the first time I've learned something without any experience. When I made Mr. Beast's play button, the only building experience I had was Legos and Ikea furniture, but this is the first time I've only had one week to do it. I dove right in, researching how to design something like this, and what I found was pretty interesting. There were two types of experience I needed, practical and digital. It turns out there are free programs out there where you can design and build things out of pretty much every Lego piece ever made, but I also wanted to build some more in real life, because that way I can write them off on my taxes. <laughs> that way I can see building techniques in practice. Next, I needed to figure out how to design Legos digitally because that's how most Lego designs get made. I looked around for programs I could use and found three main options. The main program I use for my 3D designs is Blender, and it turns out there are Blender add-ons for designing Legos. This one can turn any 3D model into a Lego version, this one contains realistic plastic for the pieces, and this one makes animations of a set being built. People have made some cool stuff with it, but I might as well just buy real Legos with how much they cost. Option two was Megabricks, which lets you design sets out of any Lego piece except it's all on a web browser, and option three seems to be the one that most people use, and that is Studio by Bricklink. It can even generate instructions for whatever you build, and you can even buy the pieces for what you make straight from the app. I'll probably use this one as it has the most available pieces to use, but it's also the most complicated by far. There's no way this could be learned in a week, and I have until tomorrow morning. Awesome. Let's look at what other people have made in here to see kind of what we're dealing with. Someone made this dragon. I'm not gonna get even closer to that. Wow. Okay, someone made a different ship in the bottle. I think... I think these took longer than a week, guys. All right, well, that's enough of that. You can also import any existing set into the program by entering its ID number. I've always wanted to build the Death Star. Let's try that one. Oh, no. They even laid them out by color. I'm really glad they separated all the hands there. That's really, that's really nice of them. All right, I just downloaded the instructions. You guys better like the video, man. That's all I'm saying. Okay, there's step one. Uh, that would mean there's only about... 502 left to go. Anyways, the app started freezing every time I moved a piece, and I could have just worked this whole time and got the real one. That was a poor use of time. So now that I had some experience under my belt, it was time to start designing something completely by myself. I thought a good way to ease into it would be to take a bunch of YouTubers and turn them into minifigures. So I frantically wrote down a list of YouTubers to make and got right to it. The first YouTubers I'm gonna do is Mr. Beast Team. My plan is to pick out the basic colors and models and then modify them using Blender, which is my main program. So far so good, I can tell who's who, but I'm definitely gonna have to add some texture details and modify the hair. And speaking of hair, today's video is partnered with Keeps. It's pretty easy to ignore your hair unless, you know, you know. But it turns out that two thirds of guys will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35. But Keeps is an online solution to help prevent that. Keeps connects you to a licensed doctor who will review your information online and recommend the right hair loss treatment plan for you. Then your treatment is brought directly to your door. Unlike my play button, I'm getting desperate now. Keeps offers generic versions of the FDA approved medications for hair loss, which makes it considerably more affordable. The best time to prevent hair loss is when you still have hair. So if you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash Daniel Craft or click the link in the description to receive 50% off your first order. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Daniel Craft. I moved the models over to Blender to make them look as realistic as possible. For some reason, the models that were brought over were almost completely broken. So I had to do some model surgery to get them looking right. There were gaps and holes and just really messy geometry all over them. But I was able to get them looking pretty much perfect. So next, I started working on making a photorealistic plastic to put on the Lego pieces, which didn't have any colors at the moment. After messing with colors, I added some randomly generated scratches, paint chips, and general imperfections. So I removed imperfections and and then added imperfections. 
Just don't worry about it. I didn't really like the textures for the faces that were available in the app, and I wanted to make custom textures to match the actual people. Drawing is not exactly my strongest area, but I've gotten better at Photoshop since the Snapchat incident. I studied real minifigures and started drawing my own LEGO faces. Most LEGO faces and pieces in general have one base color, and if they're printed, they then have a designated area for the printed part to go. It sounds simple, but making all these custom textures and materials takes longer than you might think. But in the end, we have something that looks like like it could be a real Lego piece. For the torso piece, I simplified some of the Mr. Beast merch designs and printed it on in a similar way to the face. And with that, the first minifigure is done with a few more left to go. For Mr. Beast, I made another custom face, another one of his merch designs, gave him a hat similar to the one he's always wearing, and a couple of other things. For Chris, I did even more custom textures, and then there's Carl, which I based on his U2's figure. In the end, these are looking exquisite, but I was almost out of time. The call was in less than a day, and I still barely had anything to show for it. I wanted to make more YouTubers and more sets, but maybe that was a little ambitious for having less than seven days. Whatever the case, I wanted to at least make one full set, even if it wasn't going to be that good. If I was going to use these minifigures, it had to be something related to Mr. Beast, so I came up with a few ideas really quickly by basing them off his existing videos. Just try to imagine these as Lego sets. On second thought, never mind. I did see one thumbnail that gave me a pretty good idea, or at least I thought it was a good idea. Mr. Beast target practice. It'll be like a carnival game where the only goal is to hit one target. The main part of the set will be a giant Mr. Beast logo with a target inside of the jaw. And if you hit the target, the jaw will drop, causing money to just eject out of the front. Probably a few more dollars there. I, I reckon a couple more, yeah, can we get can we get a couple more? It sounded better in my head, all right? I'll, I'll admit it. But I didn't exactly have time for second guessing. I wanted to at least get some good tips out of this. I started the build by designing the mechanisms. As I learned from building the Mustang, larger sets tend to use these Technic pieces for the mechanisms and then use normal Legos for the exterior. I knew this wouldn't be easy, but I didn't expect it to take 10 hours. I'm used to normal modeling where you can make any shape in a few minutes, but modeling with Legos is more like those puzzles where you have to make a shape out of a bunch of smaller ones. One major setback is that it's very hard to change a model once you've already made it, because the changes usually involve the entire thing. That being said, I gave it my best, and even though this is the most horrifying thing I've ever made, which is saying a lot, I'm happy I at least got this far. I changed a few final things, and now it was time to show it off. I've made some pretty like horrendous things, but I think this is at this is up there with like okay. the most. Okay. Wow. Disturbing. I'm scared now. Uh, then we have the slingshot and pointed projectiles. Now the, that's a little harder to explain. I'll get to that in a second. <laughs> like a, a challenge or something, a challenge video. Yeah. That's... Yeah. <laughs> I was going for a carnival theme. I I kind of ended up with more like Five Nights at Freddy's. Oh my. That's okay. There she is. So what would you say this model right here? What's the next thing that it needs to make it better? I'm go I'm giving honest feedback, but the mechanism, it feels like you have figured it out. The overall looks of the Jaguar face, it's not exactly there. But like coming up with, uh, you know, organic shapes and making animals this big out of Lego bricks can be really challenging. So here's all the stuff I made this week, even though what I made was horrifying. I'm pretty sure I could still make a better Mario. Like, seriously, what happened here? <laughs>